Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. Welcome to another Campaign vs. History video. Now this one isn't one of the most famous campaigns, but it's with my favorite civilization, so I decided to bump it to the front of the list. We're going to be talking about Kyoto 1582 from the Battles of the Conquerors. The scenario itself is based around a pretty short event, so I thought I'd also talk a bit about the backstory of the major players leading up to it, as well as why this might have been chosen as an important historical turning point in Japanese history. So let's check it out. Before we even get to the events in the scenario, let's talk a little bit about the political climate in feudal Japan. In 1582, Japan had already been in what's called the Sengoku period for a little over 100 years, not to be confused with Son Goku of Dragon Ball Z. This particular period of Japanese history is characterized as a period of near constant warring between small feudal states with local warlords who were called daimyos. Technically, there was an official emperor of Japan, but for a long time it had been a title without any real power or wealth attached to it. To illustrate this point, famously one of the emperors during the period had to resort to selling his own calligraphy, basically as a side income to sustain himself. This would be like a president working part-time as a studio musician to keep the lights on in the White House. The arguably greater authority in Japan was the Ashikaga Shogunate, which was a dynasty of shoguns from the Ashikaga clan in the Kyoto region. A shogun was technically the highest general of Japan, though in practice there was enough of a split between clans that even the shogun didn't necessarily have much control over all of the daimyos, who mostly did what they wanted and looked out for their own interests. If you've ever played or heard anything about these Shogun Total War games, those are based around the same time period and have you fighting as one of the daimyos, trying to conquer and maneuver your way into becoming the Shogun. So for 100 years or so, Japan is in this state of constant warring, with a pretty much powerless central government. And it's from this that we get a daimyo from the Oda clan named Nobunaga, and hence his name Oda Nobunaga. I'll be using the color yellow in association with him and the things that he does, since that's what color he is in this scenario. Now Nobunaga tends to get a bad rap in popular culture as a villain, and historically he had a bit of a reputation of being kind of brutal, even by the standards of the time. If you're interested in more on that, look up Nobunaga and Warrior Monks. I won't get into his whole backstory, but basically over a couple of decades, he managed to unify a lot of central Japan through a combination of political dealings and military victories, also helped in part by his embrace of firearms to replace more traditional weapons. Along the way, he also ended the Ashikaga Shogunate that I mentioned earlier. They set him up a little bit in the introduction sequence and talk about him as wanting to unify Japan from a patchwork of bickering samurai warlords. He didn't unify Japan entirely in his lifetime, but certainly set things on the road towards that, and he was the first of three daimyos that are considered by many to have collectively done so. Unfortunately for him, just as things started to get going for Nobunaga, he's betrayed by one of his subordinate generals named Akechi Mitsuhide, whom I'll represent as Green, though he isn't mentioned in the scenario and is just presented as Kyoto. The exact reason for the betrayal isn't completely clear, and it might have been for some personal reasons, but it's really hard to say. His actions afterwards seem to suggest it was at least partly motivated as an attempt to grab power, though the execution of that afterward wasn't particularly great. The whole thing is referred to as the Honoji incident, and to briefly summarize, what happens is Nobunaga orders Mitsuhide to put together an army and go help another one of his generals in a siege to the south. Mitsuhide raises an army and starts heading there, going by Kyoto where Nobunaga is, but then sends his soldiers to go kill Nobunaga in a temple inside Kyoto and bring back his head. Nobunaga has very few soldiers to guard him and it's most commonly reported that he commits suicide as the temple burns down. In the scenario it's presented as a siege of a castle and that he dies in combat. But if you really slow it down and zoom in, you can see from some angles that his death animation is him either stabbing himself seppuku style or falling on his sword. So the suicide element is sort of there from a certain point of view. I just wish I'd known that as a kid before restarting the scenario several dozen times trying to save him. 
One of the Ensemble Studios developers later shared that they wanted the scenario to be more of a rescue mission to save Nobunaga that then goes wrong. But we're told by Microsoft Japan that Samurai never took prisoners, so they had to rework the scenario a little bit and admitted that in the end they didn't quite capture the real events. I think what they ended up with is still engaging though, and certainly more historically accurate than a rescue mission would have been. So at this point in the story, Nobunaga has been betrayed by Mitsuhide, and this is where the player comes into the scenario, representing Toyotomi Hideyoshi, whom we'll just call Hideyoshi and represent with the color cyan. Just a quick note here, Hideyoshi, like all the characters in the story, had a few name changes along the way, and that wasn't technically his name at this point, but I'm just going to keep it simple and stick to one name for everybody. We've already mentioned Hideyoshi in the story because he was actually the general in the south that was just mentioned, and Mitsuhide's army was supposed to be reinforcing him against a clan called the Mori. Instead, now Mitsuhide and Hideyoshi's armies are about to fight each other. Mitsuhide, understandably, wanted to team up with the Mori clan because they didn't like Nobunaga and he thought they would probably support him. So he sends them an alliance offer and tells them that he's killed their big enemy, Nobunaga. The story goes a bit soap opera style here and Hideyoshi intercepts the message and figures out what's going on. Keeping it a secret still, Hideyoshi signs a quick peace treaty with the Mori and turns his army around to head straight for Kyoto. The speed that Hideyoshi makes it to Kyoto is often mentioned, and it's said to have caught Mitsuhide off guard. In this scenario, there's a group of relics, and the level has a soft timer on high difficulties because the relics are garrisoned at 25 minutes, which does force you to play at least a little bit quickly, and you have to make your initial attack before 50 minutes in-game, or you lose from a relic victory. I think that's supposed to be a reference to how a lot of Hideyoshi's success is attributed to his fast action, catching Mitsuhide unprepared. The battle between Hideyoshi and Mitsuhide occurs at Yamazaki, just outside of Kyoto, on July 2nd, 1582, with the reported numbers varying, but something like Hideyoshi's 20,000 against Mitsuhide's 10,000 soldiers. The battle itself lasted only around two hours before Mitsuhide's army routed. A contributing factor to the early rout may have been the ninjas that Hideyoshi sent to raid and burn Mitsuhide's camp the night before, but one of Mitsuhide's allies also refused to take part in the battle, and even joined Hideyoshi's side as the battle started to turn. Either way, it's entirely possible to drag the scenario out to last longer than the real battle it's supposed to be representing. The mission in the scenario is to destroy several castles, and the historical parallel might be that after falling back from the Battle of Yamazaki, Mitsuhide's army held out in some castles outside of Kyoto. Mitsuhide himself continued to ride toward Kyoto, but is rumored to have been killed by bandits, effectively ending the coup. It was 13 days between Nobunaga's death and Mitsuhide's, and he had been announced as Shogun just a few days earlier. Interestingly, Mitsuhide and Hideyoshi never appear in the scenario as actual units, and Mitsuhide's name never even appears in the scenario at all, so we do miss a lot of that political side to the story. Just to take a second to look at the map, I have to say it doesn't really look like what it's supposed to. In the scenario, the three cities look like they're on islands, and I don't see much of a resemblance to the actual geography. I imagine they probably just wanted to add a water component so that you could take advantage of the Japanese strength on the water. I'm also not sure about the whole conquering Osaka as your base right at the start. The only reference I can see is Hideyoshi does have a famous castle in Osaka built, but that happens one year after the events in the scenario. And speaking of the events after the scenario ends, the immediate outcome wasn't that Hideyoshi became Nobunaga's successor, since Nobunaga still had potential heirs. Hideyoshi also wasn't very popular among the other daimyos and generals, so there was still quite a bit of fighting and politicking to go between Hideyoshi and members of Nobunaga's family. There was also a lot of conflict that I have to mention with another of Nobunaga's generals named Tokugawa Ieyasu. In the end, Hideyoshi never actually became the official shogun or emperor, but still played an important role in unifying and governing Japan. A couple of notable things he did were banning slavery, revising the tax system, and forbidding peasants to own weapons, which had the effect of reinforcing samurai as the warrior class of society. He also famously attempted to invade China through Korea, as it describes in this scenario, but it actually doesn't go so well. Twice. But we'll talk about that when we get to a video on the Noryang Point scenario and Admiral Yi's turtle ships. 
For a bit more in-depth take on Nobunaga's death and Hideyoshi's story, there's a custom campaign on the Steam Workshop that I'd recommend checking out, and it's based on the same time period and characters, except as a longer and fully fleshed out four-part campaign. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.